Hello and welcome to the 2024 Southland softball season previews. And I'm joined right now by the Lamar University Cardinals and head coach Amy Hooks and Cam Needenthal. Cam, Amy, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. How are you? Awesome. Looking forward to another great year of Southland softball. And coach, we'll start with you. Uh, our 12 and 12 SLC record last year, the number four seed twice saving off elimination and making it all the way to being the third team left standing in the tournament last year. How do you look back on 2023 and what have you taken from 23 to build towards this 2024 season? Yeah, we had a great run in the tournament. Um, I think it was a testament to, uh, um, you know, some of the older players that, that have been there and, and some of them that haven't been there that wanted to to do that for our program. So it was just a great foundation laid and, and the eight returners just having that hungry taste in their mouth of wanting to go a little further this year and, and um, you know, getting into that championship game and then ultimately winning it. So um, it's it's prepared those eight and, and they've been really good at um, our newcomers of saying, you know, what kind of run we had and, and what they want to do. We have a special senior class this year that really wants to uh, be the first class in, in program history to win a Southland Conference title. So um, I think it was a great foundation, like I said, last year. And, and um, even, you know, being able to go put the label on the bracket and, and feeling that excitement with your teammates, it's just a special moment for them and uh, something that I think this group wants to experience together. And Cam kind of riffing off that with, with what Coach has just said. Obviously, last year was your first year at Lamar, but you now are one of the returners that Coach was just describing. So where's your excitement level heading into 2024 with the group you have around you? I just think they're hungry. Like, they're freshmen. They're trying to earn a spot. And so I think everyone has that, like, kind of dedication. Like, we all have the same goal. And all of us seniors, like, we put that out there day one. That That's what we wanted to do. And so I think they're just following the leader or following our lead yeah and coach we, we touched on it a little bit but the resilience that your team showed in in winning those two elimination games in the tournament this year that feels like something that flows throughout this program of you know never giving up and being able to bounce back and and continue to compete is that something that you pe preach on a regular basis in in practices and games I mean, we just try to formulate practice in our scrimmage games to to be really difficult in moments. And um, we talk about, you know, in one of the innings, it's a walk-off inning and trying to walk it off and kind of building those pressures inside those um, controlled environments. And so we work on it a lot. Um, but I think the biggest thing is from day one, we tell them, like, you, go be history makers. Go rewrite the history book. Um, it's never been done here. And when you hear that and, and you're, you want to be a part of that first, there's a hunger and a, and a deep desire to to want to work hard and, and it'll, it'll never be taken away that first team that wins brings it home to Beaumont wins the Southland Conference title uh, it'll never be taken away from them and they'll be celebrated for years to come so um, we talk about it a lot uh, but it's up to these guys to go out there and perform and um, the bond they've created this year and just kind of rallying around those goals that they have set um, has been really great to see so we're ready, you know, to get out there and, and compete against somebody other than ourselves. But um, it's all internal. What they're doing in the locker room, what they're doing on the field, and just as a team is is what's going to be really special about this group this year. And speaking of this group, Coach, obviously Cam touched on, you know, the hunger of the, the newcomers and trying to add to that returning class. But, you know, it is a young team throughout this roster. Um, what does their senior leadership, you know, contribute to forming this team and how you want to create the culture with so many incoming newcomers? Right. Well, not to let Cam get emotional, but uh, this is it for them. Uh, and the seniors know that and, and they have a goal in mind. And, um, you know, they're they're telling the underclassmen that every day, like it, it's go time. And and our season ended as juniors in the way we didn't want it to end. We wanted to be the last team on that field in, in Lake Charles and hosting that trophy and um, just having that feeling in their mouth and um, saying, hey, let's rally around each other and let's go get it. And I think something that's really cool is the underclassmen want it just as bad for the seniors and has they've expressed that. So um, this is go time for this group and uh, everybody has a number. Everybody's limited in their uh, collegiate career, but for the seniors that it's a little shorter than, than everybody else. So um, I think when you have that camaraderie and, and that culture and that locker room um, and you won't really want to do it for the person next to you and for that senior class and want to send them out on a good note, only good things can happen. And, and Again, it's a testament to what the team's doing and the individual players of getting everybody on board. 
So, so Cam, coming from what Coach just said, what would you say is the standard that you guys as seniors set for the underclassmen as they come in and join this Lamar team? Well, coming off of last year, like, we just want to win. We want to go farther than last year. Like, our goal is to be better every year, and especially now, like, all of us seniors, like, we are we don't want to end our career in Lake Charles, I mean, Hammond, right? So we want to go farther than that. And so it's just, I don't know, come here and work hard. Well, awesome. And, Coach, we, we know the cyclical nature of, of college athletics, and you're always having to recruit and replace people. But how do you go about replacing someone like Aaliyah Ruiz, who had such an incredible season last year? How do, how do you go about accomplishing that and pushing forward? Yeah, well, this is the first year as a head coach at Lamar that I haven't had Aaliyah on the pitching staff. So she came in here with us. Um, she she set some records while she was here and just a uh, fierce competitor in the circle. But uh, what was good is that we had Aaliyah when we had Kari and Fedwa. So Aaliyah has been able to help them last year and now kind of just pass the torch to them. And we have um, four new ones in the bullpen this year, but really relying on Fedwa and Kari who have uh, SLC tournament experience um, and then just a whole year under their belt with Aaliyah who's done it for a really long time. Uh, the torch is yours and so it's really on their shoulders now. A Aaliyah was a great piece um, and just every year you're, you're losing some of those good pieces but again she helped lay the foundation. I think she did a great job passing the torch to those guys and now Kari and Fedwa can can put everything that they learned and the experiences they gained last year into our four uh, new pitching staff or uh, pitchers, which I think is just they've done a great job doing that. And it's really big to get them experience. Both of them got the ball in the tournament in some big game situations. Fedwa coming in the NSU game and closing the door there. And um, so they have that hunger, they have that taste, and, and then they can pass that down to to our newbies. And Cam. We talk about wanting to win, but also, you know, we know it's a tough schedule that you guys have built. One of the names that jumps out straight away is obviously the University of Oklahoma. What does that opportunity mean to you to get to test yourself against the best team in the country, the defending national champions? Like, it's it's scary. Nobody really wants to be on their schedule at, at first, but now we're like, we're kind of hyping it up all together as a team. We're calling it, we're going to say the biggest upset of the century. <laughs> Stuff like that. I don't know. It's just going to be good practice for us. It doesn't. It doesn't count towards conference. It doesn't affect us getting into the tournament at all. It's just. It's just a game. And coach, for you, you know that that kind of schedule building and having those big names on your schedule, do you feel like that will set you up well for Southland Conference play? Absolutely. I mean, I mean, that's the number one reason we do it. But I think the biggest thing is these guys get an opportunity to prepare against the defending national champions. And if you can, if you can prepare for the best team in the nation, um, that's just going to help you prepare for the, the Southland conference um, opponents. And, and so I just think that it's a great opportunity for them. And the, we break it up in three phases. So the preseason is for these guys to play together, learn and grow. And if you followed any of, of our season last year, um, it seemed like we just kept a, getting a little bit better. And then we made that run in the tournament because I tell these guys from day one, we need to be playing our best softball in May. And um, if we can continue to face some of the best teams in the nation, we're going to learn a ton about ourselves. We're going to continue to grow, sharpen what we need to sharpen. And then the second phase is Southland Conference uh, play. And so going in there, being really battle tested um, and and. You know, it's hard to beat a team. I don't care who you are. It's hard to beat a team three times. So when you get in a conference, it's a gauntlet. And then uh, letting that prepare you for that run in May and in the Southland Conference Tournament. So um, I love building a tough preseason. Uh, and, you know, who, who wants to play OU? We'll, we'll play OU. So uh, we're excited about it. Cam, coach there just described her preseason as tough. Uh, how would you describe preseason? How has preseason been for you as you got ready to get started here against Tarleton in a few days? Uh, it's definitely tough. Uh, last year I was a two-way player, so I was a pitcher also. So that was more tough on me mentally. This year I get to focus on just hitting, which has helped me a lot. But I don't know. It's hard to stay locked in. There's so many games we're going to get tired, but we just have to push through. And Coach, lastly for you, I just wanted to kind of touch on your feelings overall about the Southland on the whole. Obviously, you've been in the league for a number of years now. When you look up and down the league, how do you view the Southland? and where it stands softball-wise? It's a sleeping giant. I think people sleep on the Southland a little bit. Uh, we continue to get better every year. The coaches are doing a tremendous job 
uh, bringing in some of the best players in the nation, and then um, going to play tough schedules. I think the Southland just isn't afraid to go play who they need to go play to get better. Um, but if you followed the Southland uh, for as many years as I've been in the league, it always comes down to the last two weekends, and and it's always we're always jumbled up. Uh, it could be anybody's conference. And so I just think that, you know, the conference continues to get stronger and then we continue to pour money in uh, as a conference and then as institutions across the Southland Conference uh, into softball to, to, to make it a premier sport. And it's a grow, it's a, the, one of the fastest growing sports. So, um, you know, kudos to all the head coaches in the Southland and then administrators just really wanting this sport to take off. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. Awesome. And Cam, just lastly, I want to take us just inside the locker room for just a second and get to know one or two of your teammates a little bit better. So you guys as a team, you're in a karaoke bar. Who is the best singer on the team? Who would be the best karaoke singer? And then secondly, what would your karaoke song of choice be? Um, the best singer would definitely be Cardona Mitchell. Huh? You didn't think so? Yeah, I like it. And then my karaoke song would probably be Love by what's your name Aisha Cole something like that <laughs> nice well can we can we get a promise that if uh if you guys lift the trophy in Hammond in May that we'll get you on the mic singing that in front of everyone well, I'll do, I'll do it. I, no, it I can care. be a duet I'll be right there with her <laughs> <laughs> well brilliant we'll look forward to that down there uh in May coach Cam thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today great to get to speak with you and best of luck for the start of the 2024 season thank you thank you